All right, guys, welcome. Um, this video, this is next one, overclocking your video card. You know, how do we really know when it's stable? Um, games today, you'll just, you'll get errors. Um, let's take a step back. Back in the day, you used to just get artifacts. You get artifacts, no problems. Um, you know, adjust your overclock till you don't notice them. And, you know, tone it down a little bit, no problem. Well, nowadays, games like Call of Duty Warzone, which is the reason I'm making this video, um, I've been getting dev errors since that game came out. Now, I've always clocked 120 and 1000 all day, no problems, till Warzone. So what I want to show you is how to use OCCT here um, to guarantee that this is stable and you're not getting any kind of issues. Um, do that. I'm going to reopen that so you can see where that's at. So what OCC does um, is that program is going to keep basically an image up on the screen and let's say you're getting 100 frames per second that's how many times it's rendering um, so it's going to keep rendering and rendering and rendering that frame and it's checking for any discrepancies any differences per pixel um, on that image and if it detects them it's going to show up a marking as an error um, so let's show you how to do that and let's see all right, so I'm going to assume you already know how to use Precision X1 or Afterburner. We're just using this to adjust the overclock itself, so that's all. So let's change this to zero. Let's say we haven't done any overclocking. We just got a brand new 3080 or 3090 or some new Amper card or Radeon that's coming out. What we want to do is open OCCT. I'll have a link down in the, down in the description below for that. Um, it's going to start out here at OCCT. Don't mess with these. Um, run one of these the wrong way, mainly this one with AVX instructions and small data sets can really run your temperature. It, if you're not on water cooled, um, you're probably going to thermal throttle immediately, which is super unnecessary stress for your CPU. Um, that's a whole separate thing. Um, so stay away from these two for this video. Click 3D. Um, this is going to stress the graphics card, but graphics cards can handle it. You know, it's not going to blow anything up. So. What we're going to do here, you'll see shader complexity and you'll see resolution. You may have to run this a couple of times. You want to try to get less than 100 frames per second, but more than 50. Um, if you're stressing the graphics card so much that's less than 50 frames a second, you're not drawing enough frames to guarantee a reliable error correction. It, same thing goes if you're getting 300 frames per second. You're getting 300, well, that's you're not even stressing the video card, so you're overclocked. It seems stable. So for my video card, 2080 Ti right here, um, I had to run 2K at maximum shader complexity. So uh, don't set an FPS limit. Uh, again, make sure error detection is checked. So what we're going to do now is we're going to hit play on that. Give it a second. Alright, so here we go, and here you'll see, now it loads up the eyeball. Alright, so what we're doing here, look at that, we've got three, six errors coming up right now. And, oh, I forgot to apply that. So let's, <laughs> I'm going to redo that real quick. So, replay that. But now you guys already got to see the errors that shows up. And again, that was the overclock I was using that was stable all the time in many games, but it's still erroring, so it's not not quite stable. All right, so here we go. We're starting over again. So now you can see it's running. We have zero, zero errors, and you know you can let this run for a minute or so. Um, you don't need to let it run for hours, days. It's not the point. It's going to detect an error pretty quick um, if you're actually erroring. So. Now we're back at Precision X1, we come over to here. The first thing I recommend doing is the core clock. It has the biggest effect on your actual frame per second gain. So what we're gonna do is start with 50, hit apply, and we're keeping an eye on these errors here. How many FPS's we're pushing, and we just wait. 
you know, wait, give me like 30 seconds. <clears throat> so, I already know that 50 is no sweat for this card. So we're going to go ahead and go up to 100, which is where I run pretty much all day now. And then you want to give it about 30 seconds or so, making sure there's no errors. There's not, it's all in the green. But now, let's go ahead and push 120 where I used to be at. And where, again, most games are stable, but not Warzone. And look at that, 7. So that's obviously not stable at all. Each one of these errors that's, that it's drawing and detecting here, 25, each one of those can cause Warzone to freeze up and give you those famous dev errors or DirectX errors. So, now what we'll do, we know we're 34 errors, 35, let that go, still reading them. We've leveled out, no more errors at this current overclock. Now we can go to memory. So now, I already know I can get 1000 all day on this Samsung memory. So there we go, we're at 1000, no errors. Let that go for a while. But then, let's jump up to 1200. Wait. Now memory errors can be delayed in this program. That's something to note. Um, and when a memory error hits, it's not uncommon for you to all of a sudden have, it, like it may all of a sudden show over here as a thousand or twelve thousand errors. It's memory errors are really bad, really bad to have when you're gaming. So always do that on the conservative side. All right. So twelve hundred, nothing. Let's go to thirteen hundred. And now we're at 1300 megahertz on the memory, which I know is not stable for gaming. And there it is, 42. See, it went up, so that wasn't stable. Drop it back down to 1200, we're at 49, 56. And again, it's gotta catch up. There's still more errors, it's just, it's just now reporting them. Now me, I run 800 because, whoops, I just closed it. Fly. I run 800 megahertz because my frame rate doesn't seem really get a boost past that so there's no no reason to run more so yeah but that's it's that simple guys um, using OCCT you're guaranteed pretty much to be stable um, everything I play now is stable with no issues um, again when running this don't pay attention to your actual GPU clock in games this setting right here will run about 2000 to 2100 megahertz on this EVGA 2080 Ti. So, um, yeah, and you'll still see some errors counting up because they, they back up when you get memory errors. It keeps going back, so it's going to keep going. So after doing this, you may want to close this one down and then restart it to get a more accurate reading after that. But yeah, guys, so anybody getting the new NVIDIA Amper cards or Big Navi cards coming out, um, I tell you, it's really exciting because um, I've had a 2080 Ti for a year and a half, two years now, and it was $1,200. And, you know, there's a lot of 2080 Ti owners out there that are mad because it's like, oh, I spent so much for that performance and now you can get it for like 700 bucks. Me personally, I'm thrilled um, because now this fidelity that I've been able and fortunate enough to experience over the last year and a half, two years, uh, now much more, you know, reachable for people at a $700 price point. So yeah, good luck overclocking and hopefully you guys get some great silicon. Thanks guys.